from zero to 125 subscribers. What? All right, well, I should do. I should do more of this. This is week two of every day a scan. This week, I wanted to think a little bit bigger. Scans ended up being entire stores and storefronts and like parts of the city that I had never been to. With it came its own set of challenges and its own set of failures and all the things that I really messed up on that I should have, well, I didn't really know because I couldn't have known because I don't know, but I learned. That's the most important part. So I want to show you everything that I posted this week, how I got there. And I also want to show everything that I didn't post Let's go into it. So this garage I found on Clarion Alley. It's a pretty famous street art location in San Francisco where the entire alley is just filled with street art. People live on the street and this, this is their garages. These are their houses. These are parts of their property that, that they grant permission to artists to come in and actually paint on. So this was a really cool garage that I liked because just because of the way it was actually lit by those two kind of... Mm, garage lights illuminating uh, the two doors. The result actually ended up coming up pretty nice. You can even see the paint residue on some of the on some of the doors. But I just didn't feel that it had enough of a story or enough substance by itself to really be posted. This wall also came out pretty well, but I just wasn't happy that it was only one sided. I didn't have the entire building or anything. And so just not worth posting things that I don't feel entirely confident on. Uh, I did run across this really cool shop named uh, Luca. The reason why I didn't want to post this was because I only had my DSLR with me that day and I didn't take any drone shots. And so you can tell the building doesn't have a ceiling. That creates a lot of problems when you're trying to create the full 3D model of the building. And so I made a, I made a point of it to come back the next day. More on that later. And so what I did end up posting actually is this house called Take It From The Top Latin Rock. This was a project done by the Presida, the Presidia, Presida, I, Presida, Presida Eyes Muralist. This was in collaboration with the Urban Youth Arts Program. So it had a really cool story around it. It clearly meant these artists meant a lot to the homeowner, which I actually ended up meeting. Surprisingly, I didn't end up needing to do any real editing or any kind of work on the house itself. Since every, almost every single part of the house was painted, there weren't any white walls or things that were I knew were, were going to come out badly. And so I walked around, took photos around the house, and then flew my drone and got a, and got a bunch from up top. The one thing I really had to account for was the fact that there was a direct sunlight hitting the house, and there was a lot of glare coming off the paint. I didn't have a polarizer or a UV filter, so I really had to just position my camera away from the reflective parts of the paint and walk at an angle. And so you can see every photo is, uh, especially in front of the house, isn't directly taking a picture of the house, but more at an angle. You wouldn't really have to do this as much if you had that polarizing filter, but I didn't. It's a beautiful house. If you have time or if you're just exploring San Francisco, go check out the house, go say hello to the person. Um, it's a really nice project. So on the second day, I had to go around my neighborhood and try to find something interesting that could fit the narrative of the, of the week. I ended up in front of this pretty interesting grocery store. It's not the most particularly beautiful store, but it has a lot of character and it has kind of a unique atmosphere. So the Sunset District is predominantly an Asian American neighborhood where the sounds that you're hearing around you, the languages that are being spoken are completely different. So I start taking my photos. It's in the middle of the day and people are out like grocery shopping. And here I am with the freaking camera trying to take pictures of watermelons up close. By this time, I think I've spent probably like 10, 15 minutes there, like arousing enough attention. The store workers start looking at me, start walking with me. On my way out, I get stopped. So they wanted to know what I was doing. And I told them I was 
you know, doing a project about the different cultures around San Francisco and capturing the stores. So <laughs> I go outside and I'm trying to figure out how to finish this. And of course, the only thing that was left were the drone shots. So walk across the street, hide in a little corner and, and launch my drone. So, and thankfully the drone is, uh, is a small one and doesn't cause too much of a disturbance. And I even got the quiet propellers that DJI recently released, pretty awesome. I took maybe around 30 or 40 images. Ultimately, I didn't think the scan actually came out all that well. The details just really didn't come out as well as I'd hoped. Mostly, I think this is due to me not knowing how to like uh, do different levels of details throughout the scan and so when I'm decimating some of these models when it's going from 300 million polygons down to something like 1 million polygons the the software decimates the model equally so you know it doesn't give any kind of weight to certain parts of the place where you took a lot more photos than than places that you didn't if you have any tips let me know still trying to figure this out I still have the scan up on sketchfab I just never ended up making it public but here's an unlisted link anyway. On the third day, I really want to capture this Luca Ravioli place that I was just telling you about. Is the sun setting already? This video's taking way too long. I wake up early. I get there around 9, 9.30. Bad mistake. The sun was still rising, and so the shadows were moving pretty quickly on the building. So I waited for the shadows to at least come down all the way to the bottom of the building before I even started to scan. I start scanning, I take pictures of the outside. This time I'm prepared. I got my camera and I got my drone. I'm gonna do the full thing. I start taking pictures of the inside and the owner comes up to me. He introduces himself and tells me his name. I'm Michael Fenno. He tells me that this is his store. I'm the third generation owner of Luca Ravioli Company. Really nice guy. Even gives me a little tour of the place. Then took over the business in 1925. Tells me that Luca is actually a place in Italy where all these Italians in San Francisco are from. Firenze and the Arno River. Yeah. It flows down to Pisa. Really proud of his heritage. Yeah, just like if you come in here and say, I'm Calabrese, I said, I'll go show you the hot peppers, okay? <laughs> and he tells me to have a good day. Thank Enjoy you so much for giving me the tour. Yeah. So I get home, I put the pictures in, I start processing and, and guess what? The images just don't align. So reality capture just recognizes the images from the ground as a completely different place than the images from the air. It's a really bad situation to be in when you actually have to go in and find exactly the same common points in the pictures, put control points and then like reprocess everything. I did that and it actually ended up working. Even though they aligned, my white balances between my DSLR and my drone were completely different. My drone were taking more blue shots, my camera was taking more yellow shots. And so putting it together, I really got like this ugly looking place and I really, I did not want to. So the only thing I could do is to, it was a reshoot. By that time it was midday and the sun was behind the store and I couldn't go back. And I had to wait till the next day. So the next day I finally, for the third time, start capturing Luca's Ravioli company. And this time, actually, I calibrated the colors of the cameras, made sure all the settings were about the same, and I even started taking the drone shots from about eye level so that they would match the perspective of the, of the DSLR. I took about 300 total images, put them into reality capture, and things aligned. I spent a good amount of time cleaning up some of those white walls and as well as the ground and the ceiling of the place, and the end result is something I'm pretty happy about. However, those awnings are super hard to capture, and they came up with a lot of holes. Within the time frame that I had, I didn't have enough time to figure out how to fix those. If you have any suggestions, let me know but I ended up posting it. One interesting thing to note is that there's also sound captured within this environment. So check out the Sketchfab link. It really helps set the tone of what it's like to be in an Italian grocery store. Anyway, as you can tell, this video is getting pretty long. It's taken me a day and a half to film this. The sun has risen, set, and risen again. So here are the lessons learned this week from everything that I did right and wrong. Number one, check your crop factor of your camera. So even if it's a DSLR or a drone, it most likely has a 4x3 or a 16x9 crop factor. The 16x9 is a crop, the 4x3 is not. Number two, match the white balances. Make sure you can get the pictures from both cameras to look as similar as possible. And if that requires post-processing, 
do it. Three, shoot in raw. That's going to help you a lot with the colors, a lot with opening up the shadows to find the smaller details that will really help your photogrammetry results at the end. Number four, scout locations throughout the week. Figure out where the sun is and how it moves in relation to the location and whether or not you have a small window to really capture it in the best way possible. And five, don't act suspiciously when you're doing photogrammetry. Try to have other people in mind when you're going around taking photos. Some people will get really suspicious as to why you're taking so many photos. And be nice. Explain to them what you're doing. Call it a 3D scan. Call it, you know, some kind of a volumetric reconstruction of this of the environment. You know, you don't have to lie. So let's wrap it all up. I didn't even have time to go through everything that I had posted. So check out the blog at everydayscan.com. That's where you can see everything that I posted, a little bit of a backstory behind each each place. Let me know what I should concentrate more on for the next video. Should, should I talk more about the behind the scenes and the stories and the crazy things that happen or more go more technical and talk a little bit about how I'm fixing these scans? What are all the technical jargons? Or should I even do a whole video about gear and what I'd recommend people to buy, what software they should have? I wanna thank my friend Dominic from NVIDIA for gifting me the shirt. I want to thank Valeria Rizzo and Shah Shahrabi for teaching me how to use Mesh Mixer and editing the meshes. I want to thank David Romero for recommending me DxO Photo Lab for processing my raw photos instead of Lightroom. It really has had made a big difference in the results. I want to thank the artists, the store owners, and the house owners of everywhere that I captured. Thank you for being awesome about this all. Do, do the like and the sub thing, and I'll see you next week.